Hello everyone and welcome back to another mysterious edition of every animated movie of the year. And boy, oh boy, have we got one for you today. We checked out My Little Pony, the movie, and after seeing it, I knew we would be in for a different kind of episode. And just what is so different about today's episode? Well, let's do a rare early throw to the list. Okay, you've noticed, My Little Pony appears twice on the list. And no, that's not a typo, which we have had before on these lists. <coughs> Last episode. But indeed, MLP does appear twice. So what's the sitch? Little <laughs> KP reference for you OGs out there. Here's the deal. I tried working around it and writing this review from a unified point of view but I continually ran into the truth of the matter. This movie can be approached from two different ways. Either you come in as an MLP fan, you've bought in and you know and enjoy the world already, or you come in from nothing, a reviewer who can't tell MLP from a ham sandwich. So I've decided to give MLP two slots, hence the asterisk, one from my own MLP fan perspective, and one from the perspective of me knowing nothing of the universe, but still being me. And in a year with some really rocky entries, as you can see, both listings fared pretty well. Of course, you can ask, well, how is this any different from the Smurfs or Cars? Smurfs has a full series of shows to come before it, or Cars with two prequels or one, if you know what I mean, those have baggage that they bring along with them as well, so that's true. But because of my personal history with the pony mythos, this one is a bit different for me. Plus, I mean, come on, let's not pretend that the Smurfs were ever so well developed in their original series. So let's start with this question. Am I a brony? Well, not particularly. To elaborate, we must journey back three years where I made a nearly 15 minute long deep dive review of My Little Pony. Not just Friendship is Magic, but every single generation of the Pony Mythos. Every. Single. One. Up until then, I hadn't seen even a minute of My Little Pony in my entire life, but making that review, I came to really like Friendship is Magic, and it became easy for me to understand why the fandom is so passionate. If you haven't seen the video, I'd highly recommend checking it out. I'll leave a link down in the description. I think it remains my favorite video on the Lootoons channel. I literally spent an entire month submerging myself into the MLP culture and watching pretty much nothing but ponies for a whole month. It was fun, and I emerged perhaps not as a brony, but certainly a fan of Friendship is Magic. I think during it I saw the first three seasons and I haven't kept up with the show since, but straight away I felt like this movie was a film companion to the series and I cannot imagine MLP fans being unhappy with it. As you see from my fan ranking, I quite like this one. I get the idea that the filmmakers knew they were making this movie for the fans and not general audiences, which was awesome. There's not much time at all spent reintroducing the main cast, who most of us have already spent years with. We just get straight into a brand new adventure. The plot is pretty simple. Twilight Sparkle is in charge of planning a party for the Festival of Friendship, but her plans are halted when the evil army of the Storm King turns up to seize the magic of the pony princesses. With the other princesses out of commission, it falls to Twilight Sparkle and our main cast of ponies to search out the mysterious queen of the hippos and save Equestria. All while being pursued by the Storm King's forces and an evil lieutenant pony called Tempest. Of course, the ponies making friends all along the way. You know, it feels weird seeing this movie right after Ninjago, a movie that was so confused about what it wanted to be. And here we have My Little Pony delivering a confident, streamlined, fun, structured story that knows exactly what it is and what it all boils down to. Friendship. And yes, that is cheesy and silly, but like I said, either you've bought in or you haven't. And if you have, then you know friendship quite literally is magic and is as strong a theme in this film as it is in the series. To which my hat goes off. Now, if you aren't a fan of MLP or don't know it well, I can see this movie being quite... Uh, repellent. I saw someone compare it on Twitter to eating a bag full of Skittles and then puking it out. Obviously not a fan. But it's almost fair, for the uninitiated, a bunch of colorful ponies jumping around and singing about friendship is easy to write off as childish silliness, and it wouldn't be entirely unfounded. The main cast of ponies aren't really explored or developed or barely even introduced in the film. Sure, you get the surface, Rarity is the posh one, Rainbow Dash is the tough one, etc, etc, but that's about the extent of it, and I'm betting that many die-hard fans will take issue with the lack of real involvement with the main ponies. 
although a conflict that emerges towards the end of the film really does push these ponies far past anywhere you would expect. But largely, the movie doesn't pander and kind of expects you to know about the ponies. Which as a fan, I love skipping that redundant part, but you can see how that is not the best for new viewers. And to reiterate, the ponies we've come to know and love don't have these massive character arcs that develop and evolve. And going in, I was worried about how the characters would be challenged since they're already so established. But they pull it off with cleverness as it's not necessarily the ponies who grow and change, but it's how they impact those that they meet along the way. And again, in a streamlined way, always bring things back to friendship. Needless to say, the film has a bigger budget than your average Friendship is Magic episode, and it really shows, so it's cool to see the MLP universe we know expanded massively and with a bit more elbow grease put into the animation. The result is a colorful, lively, 2D animated fantasy world. The environments and settings look fantastic, and while the budget is hugely expanded, here's some food for thought. The estimated budget is around six to seven million dollars for this film, which relatively is insanely small. For reference, something like Captain Underpants had about 38 million to work with. So... Of course, doing the 3D animation and all of that good stuff takes a lot more effort and money, but still. The animation improvements are really appreciated and elevate the film. Not quite to the ranks of other 2D classics, but still some nice, bold visuals. There was so much to love in the movie if you have that nostalgia for the classics. As MLP always is, the film is littered with toe-tapping songs that I was listening to on the ride home. It's all adorned with huge set pieces, fantasy magic, and some surprising action scenes never really possible in the small screen series. Going back to the music, there are lots of really cool songs. My personal favorite was Time To Be Awesome, where the ponies help a crew of pirates turn delivery guys get back to their pirating ways through song. And holy crap, Zoe Saldana can sing. Seriously, stop the music. Can we get an animated musical where Zoe Saldana is the star? Because there's not nearly enough of her singing in this movie. Oh, and the bit of the pirates being parrots? Brilliant. The entire cast, in fact, is so good. Of course, all the regular cast from the show is there, and they always do a great job, but the new celebrity talent that's added in is stunning. Without question, the best celebrity ensemble in an animated film of late. Liev Schreiber goes all in as the Storm King, bringing this sort of Hades sarcasm to it. Very funny. Totally buys in. Kristen Chenoweth, who was always destined to be a cute little pony, plays a bubbly seahorse. I mean... Come on. Tay Diggs, of course, is a roguish sort of cat fellow. His voice is amazing and he has a great vibe to it. And lastly, Emily Blunt as the pony charged with pursuing the leads. She is great too and has a full-fledged villain song. Yeah, remember when animated movies had villains and villains had songs? Yeah, me neither. But I'm talking about Academy Award nominated and Tony winning actors here, and all of them seem to genuinely care about the roles they're playing. When actors abandon their scruples about voicing cartoon characters, the results really show, and this cast certainly checked their scruples at the door. My Little Pony the movie just feels like the movie you would want if you're a fan of the series. And that's a daunting task. With now seven seasons in the bag, there's a lot to live up to. And even though I haven't kept up with this series, it really lives up for me. I can't speak for the diehards and the bronies out there who may not be as thrilled due to the lack of the main pony's involvement. But they did a lot with the time that they had. I mean, I don't actually have much negative to say about this movie, guys. It's a fun, large-scale fantasy adventure with a coherent and streamlined story, stepping up the 2D animation from the series, jam-packed with fun songs, and an unabashed hoof to the ground that says we know just who we are. Is this a game-changing, groundbreaking film? Well, maybe not. But is it an absolute home run in terms of making a film from a beloved series that is seven seasons in and has one of the most passionate and rabid fan bases out there? I'd say yeah. Hype ain't easy to live up to, gang. Now, I know I'm sounding overly positive about this, so fine, fine, you want some complaints? Here are three more that I can think of in addition to some of the stuff I said earlier. My favorite pony from the series Fluttershy kinda got the shaft with screen time. A storyline with a character changing towards the end of the film is super telegraphed, but it's kinda okay because it feels more like homage than a shocking twist. Lastly, and probably my only real complaint with this film from a fan perspective, the movie ends with this Sia song, sung by a Sia pony. Uh, yes, a pony that looks like the singer Sia. 
and for me the song just felt super out of place. The MLP songs have a very specific vibe to them, and the sort of real 2017-ness of this Sia song kind of clashed with the vibe in my opinion. I wish they just ended with a more traditional MLP song where the whole cast got to sing, Instead, it's kind of this slow-paced solo Sia ballad. And normally, I really like Sia. She is an amazing talent, but I think that song would have been better for the credits and maybe end with a group number. Obviously, a small gripe in an experience that I otherwise really enjoyed. And guess what? I actually started watching Friendship is Magic again today, so maybe I'll catch up and figure out how Twilight Sparkle actually became a princess, because she wasn't one when I last watched, I don't think, but... Good for you, Twilight. So, a strange review, I suppose. Boil it down to, if you know nothing about MLP, I don't think this movie is the thing to drag you in. But if your interest is piqued, check out the first few episodes. Only takes a few to get to know and love the characters. And if you're already a fan, I think you probably left the theater feeling like you got a movie that does great justice to the series. And that's about all I got for you guys today. The catch-up effort continues. I'm thinking Nutjob and Leap will probably be a double episode once they release on video. And beyond that, well, some good stuff coming up, of course. Gotta say, though, this movie totally puts me into that classic animated musical mood. And though I'm sure they've already clarified how cool would it be if Coco was a musical, I'll hold my breath. And I will see you guys next time on Every Animated Movie of the Year.